In the previous step, what we did was we created a test using mock, Mockito. In this step, we will use some of the Mockito annotations to make writing tests even more easier. I'm copying the test which we wrote in the previous step, uh, some business mock test. I'm copying it and I'm pasting it as some business mock annotations test. So let's open that mock annotations test. So here we are creating a mock, right? So instead of doing this manually, what we can do is we can use one of the annotations which is present in Mockito. That's at mock. So at mock and I can say data service mock. That's it. So this would be mocked. So now I can comment or remove actually these two lines of code which are present in here. The other thing I can do is also create the business IMPL. What I would want to happen is I would want to create the business IMPL, but I would want to make sure that all the things in business IMPL are set properly. I would want to make sure that this data service is injected into this business IMPL. And there is another annotation called inject mocks. So all that I need to do is say inject mocks. And now I can do this. And now if you run this, you would get a failure actually. <laughs> Don't worry about the failure, it would fail anyway. So it's, it's, it fails due to a null pointer exception because you need to use a runner. So whenever we're using Mockito annotations, then we would need to use a run with, so we would want to run this unit test with Mockito JUnit runner.class. This looks to be deprecated. Let's use the other one. Control space. Okay, this is cool. So Mockito JUnit runner dot class. Right click, run as JUnit test. Cool, this test succeeds. Awesome, right? So now you'd see that this test becomes even more simple. So to take a step back, the three changes we made is we created an at mock data service mock. So this at mock we have imported. So org mockito mock at inject mocks again org mockito inject mocks. We added an annotation on the business IMPL. What would happen is this business IMPL is created and the data service mock would be injected into it directly. And we added a run with. So this run with would look at the annotations. So the Mockito JUnit runner has the logic to look at these annotations, initialize them before running the test. And then these tests are run. Now I'll actually inline this. Let's do that. Inline this variable all shift I. Let's do that here as well. So now you can look at how easy it is to create new test scenarios. So let's say I want to create a new test scenario where I'm returning nothing back. What would be expected result? Think about it. I would rename this to no values. What would be the expected result? It should be integer.min because I'm not passing any data. That's cool. Why should, why is it? Because I'm initializing it to integer.min value. When there is nothing, this loop does not exist at, at all and the greatest would be written as min value. This is kind of a bug, but that's how it works right now. So what we are really focusing on is how to use JUnit and how to write really great tests using Mockito. We looked at uh, Mockito and we understood uh, the basics of Mockito, how to create a mock, how to make a method return what we want to do. And in this step, we focused on three important things. One was the at mock annotation. The next one was at inject mocks annotation. And the last one was at run with. And we saw how these make the tests very, very simple, readable. And I can create hundreds of such tests in no time. That's the beauty of Mockito. Mockito makes mocking very, very easy. Actually, when it comes to in 28 minutes, we really think unit testing is a skill that every programmer should know. Unit testing with JUnit and unit testing with Mockito are a couple of basic skills as far as programming with Java is concerned. And that's why we focused on introducing Mockito to you very early in this specific course. I hope this was very useful for you to understand Mockito. Until the next step, bye-bye.